What's going on guys? Going to do another little quick DIY video. Hopefully this is a little bit better in quality. Uh, my neighbor's having a pool put in, so uh, sorry if there's a lot of background noise. I'm trying to record these when it's a little quiet, but it can be a little tricky. So uh, with that said, uh, if you have an aftermarket bumper, uh, odds are you're going to have this issue with the AC line because of how the AC line sticks out. So you're going to want to bend it. Uh, I think most bumpers call for them to be bent. Uh, I did that with my uh, C4 Low Pro bumper. The issue was when I got the full width bumper, I didn't bend the bottom section. I'm not sure if they said that in the directions or not. I just skipped over the entire bending part of their instructions because I had already bent it, thinking it was referring to that upper section. So that may have been my own screw up. Uh, I'm not putting it on them. But just to help you prevent this from occurring, make sure you bend your lines and make sure your bumper's clearing. So one of the main issues I ran into were the part numbers. Um, the lower part is the correct one for the 2017 Forerunner. The upper one also shows up for it. Now, I'm beginning to think it was an error on the website, even though I was using a generic Toyota website, but I have run into issues before on these where two part numbers match up for the same part, but it's not the same part. So, uh, some, it seemed like the t upper section was for like 2010 to 2016, and the lower one is for 2017, the current. I'm not really sure, but this one here looks to be like the correct one. The first thing I did was obviously I took off the plastic part of the bumper uh, just to give myself a little more work room so I can go in through here if I have to or whatever. So like most Toyota clips, you have a little spot here that goes pushes down and then it pulls off. So real simple to do. So next we're just going to remove this 10 millimeter piece. So as mentioned, there is that bottom 10 millimeter bolt, and that's also where the AC line reaches into the condenser. So it's actually a little easier to come through down where this bottom tow hook is right here. You'll see this tow hook, and then just kind of pop it in there. It's pretty much already loose now. This piece here is the AC line. This piece here is part of the condenser. So you want to come right in here, just kind of push and wiggle. You can push on the line from the other side as well if you need to, but you'll see it'll just kind of, there's like two spots, there we go, out of the groove. That is the piece that we need to get rid of, or pop off I should say, it's kind of like a clip. So if you look here, you'll see there's the line here, that's where it's going to separate. That same face is what you want to do. I was trying for a little while to do it there, that's not where you want to do it, you want to hit these two holes. If you don't have a dirty vehicle like mine, they probably won't look like they're filled with dirt. You should see silver. Alrighty, so I'm gonna try and show you how to do this up close. I've been trying to do it with the safety pin I conjunction I made, but I've bent it too much so it doesn't want to really work anymore. So as you can see in that hole, you can kind of see the silver piece there. Just a little bit, you can kind of see it in there. That's where you're gonna go. So I have two of my um, hex tools here. I'm gonna try to just pop them in place here and then push it out for you so you can kind of get a visual of, of how this is done. Um, again, the Toyota tool is about 30 bucks and it'll do this in a heartbeat, but I hate buying tools that I'm only gonna use once when they're like 30 bucks. If it was like a $5 tool or something, I would have done it, but basically you just push in here until you see it like that and boom, pops loose. So now we just need to undo that line there. So and there we go, pop this. All right, and now the trick is we gotta pull up. We gotta like pull up from down here, but also pull out. So the pulling out section shouldn't be too hard. I'm gonna kind of just do it like it's a maze. I'm gonna kind of pull out as far as I can. And then once it starts to hit here, I'm going to lift up and then that should still allow more clearance underneath. So I hope that's kind of helpful to understand. So I'm pulling it out as far as I can here. Then I'm going to lift up. Then I'm going to pull out some more, lift up, pull out some more, lift up. And then we should, we're almost out. Yeah, we are. Wiggle it through. Done. And then the bottom section just has to kind of Come through, there we go. Now, let's 
kind of a, like I said, it's going to be like a little puzzle piece here, but I may be able to actually just take it out underneath the bottom section of my bumper, so let's see if I can do that. Okay. And there we go. So the first thing you want to do is take these and lube them up. Make sure they're lubed. So as you can see, put the new line in there. A little indent right there fits in that groove. See how it fits? And close it. And that's it. It will not move. You're done. Alrighty, so we're almost there. Basically just pushing this in. I'm using some leverage here. Just uh get it going. You can see it's starting to go. And then all you gotta do once you've gotten it in, it took me a couple tries, but just tighten it down like you would any other bolt. So as you can see down there, it's not touching. There is, it looks like it because of how it curves, it's not. But it is close. So with balancing and things like that, there's a good chance it could rub at times. To prevent that, I'm just gonna get a rubber hose, wrap it around there, 